Tell them who you is, Doc, where you from, how you know this. Oh, this is my young boy, like, you know what I mean? I, we got like 30 years in, you know what I'm saying? You know, like when it was cold out here and shit. This is my young boy, you know what I'm saying? He was holding it down, down his, you know, down the end, right down the road down there. One of my stomping grounds. I, I, I'm actually from Franklin and Burks. Yeah. You know what I mean? Exactly. Get, I ain't from Diamond Street. I'm from Franklin and Burks. All right. Uh, yeah, so you know you know me, I'm nationally known out this bay here, so you know what I mean? Two players meet us a treat. Alright. Now explain how you came to recognize or know anything about the rat. <laughs> Cut it real fast, y'all. <laughs> Cut it real fast. <laughs> Tommy Hill, whose given name was John Wilson, had been living in Atlanta since serving two years in prison on federal drug charges and since the Ram Squad's breakup. Hill launched his career in the late 1990s with the help of former mob boss Joseph Skinny Joy Merlino, and federal authorities later pressured him to cooperate with an investigation into drug dealing and city hall corruption. When he came out, I had a long talk with him about what I thought he needed to do to straighten out his life, said Bernie Resnick, an entertainment lawyer who had worked with Hill since the late 1990s. He was listening, or at least I thought he was listening. Resnick, who said he learned of Hill's death from another client, said he told Hill to work in the background as a songwriter, promoter, and marketer of new talent. The average person that's in the streets, that's out there getting busy and moving around, they frown their face upon the rat. They don't want the rat nowhere near them. Once you snitch, once you testify, I don't care if you my cousin, my brother, whatever the situation is, people do not want these guys around them. But then you have some people that don't care because of that person that they had love for they don't care if the person told whatever the situation is and they will also make excuses for that person if you a regular citizen i i can understand it if you was in the streets to each his own but i say that to say this today i present to y'all tommy hill jr and we hear tommy hill jr and you think of his son no this actually is not his son Actually, his dad, Tommy Hill Jr. dad, was a close friend of Tommy Hill. But for some reason, he ended up with the name of Tommy Hill Jr. And this is probably the only guy that represents Tommy Hill to this day. And he don't see anything wrong with what Tommy Hill did. Now, I'm not here to judge. I'm not here for a biased opinion. This is just content. And he also has a story. He been a part of Tommy Hill life since the late 90s. So I'm gonna let y'all hear a few clips of what Tommy Hill Jr. got to say about Tommy Hill Butter. Tommy is uh, my dad's best friend. My dad is uh, Anthony McNeish. Uh, his, his name Tony, but Spider in the streets. Um, okay. Yeah, uh, his cousin, is Ryan, that's the whole Hill figure mob. Ryan, Tommy, Tony, and myself, and uh, some other. Um, and they was they was best friends. They came up trapping. Um, but like I said, blew the bread and um. But I got signed with Tommy and like you know like the typical story. Sign you at birth and you know plan it out and boom you know. You know, he's a legend. He's a he's he's an icon. He's a he's a uh you know a major you know a trap figure, trap lord, um, good guy. Everybody know he's a good guy, but you know, um, look out for everybody. Um, 
know what I'm saying? He, he was an overall good man, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't really no no issues, you know what I'm saying? His, his character was up there, you know? Hill told the Inquirer that last year, he had rebuffed those overtures, but he testified in 2004 against the trio of Kensington crack dealers accused of amassing the arsenal of weaponry to protect their turf. Hill, 36, began serving his prison sentence that same year for selling crack. When he came out, I had a long talk with him about what I thought he needed to do to straighten out his life, said Bernie Resnick, an entertainment lawyer who had worked with Hill since the late 1990s. He was listening, or at least I thought he was listening. Resnick, who said he learned of Hill's death from another client, said he told Hill to work in the background as a songwriter, promoter, and marketer of new talent. Hill appeared to have been following that advice. He started a company, 34th Floor Entertainment, and worked mostly with artists in Atlanta and North Carolina. Because of the nature of the testimony he gave, he was going to have a target on his back for a very long time, Resnick said. Of course, Tommy had trouble doing anything in the background. Social media and news websites dedicated to hip hop were filled Sunday night with speculation about Tommy's Hill death. But Philadelphia police would not discuss the case. In fact, police would not even officially identify Hill as the victim of the Friday morning shootings outside Rubens Mark Bar at 8131 Stanton Ave. The original account of the shooting, police said the victim left the bar about 1.30 a.m. without paying his tab. When the manager went outside to collect the money, police said three masked men approached and announced the robbery. After the two robbers riffled the victim's pockets, they shot him in the chest and lower body. Police said the manager and bar security guard then drew their own weapons and traded gunfire with the robbers. No one else was injured. The victim was taken to Einstein Medical Center in critical condition. He was pronounced dead at 516 Sunday morning. So the original day of the shooting was Friday. You know, so he died two days after being shot. So I know it's a lot of speculation out there where, you know, the average person is going to look at it like Tommy Gates testif he testified on people. You know, he told, and not only did he tell, he was mentioning like a lot of people names and stuff like that. So you're going to automatically think that he got his life taken over the statements that he gave. But from what they're saying here is that it was allegedly a robbery. So nobody really knows exactly what happened, but whoever did take his life, they had masks on and they robbed him first before they took his life. And on top of that, we gotta remember, masks are regular today. You see masks all the time in the hood. But back then, everybody wasn't really, you know, wearing masks like that unless it was a situation where they did plan to take somebody life or, you know, commit a crime that they knew it was cameras around to get away. Nah, he, he was an innocent man. The government came down on him. Um, he got out. He was out for, what, two months. And then all of a sudden, they talking about 100 years. Um... 100 years to life, he, he an innocent man, you know what I'm saying? It, he an innocent man. It was the Philadelphia, you know what I'm saying? Most definitely. Uh, boy, backs. I mean, to me, that's why I, I would tell him, like, don't even go that way. Leave that alone. And, um, but, you know that's it is what it is, but boy backs. Um, I don't. He, he he folded, man. That man is a snake. You know, what I mean that. I could I could see him going that route and and uh gave him up for 
know what I'm saying, a, 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 a pound or a couple ounces, uh, and you know what I'm saying, it, it just, it, man, that, that should be more always talked about, and, and you see who here today, not Tommy, you know what I'm saying, and if, if Tom was here, my ass would be where I had to be, you feel me, he, he messed that all up. AKA Blue, you know what it is. Ram Squad, original underboss, Philadelphia's last underboss, live and direct. I mean, a lot of late this, speculating that. They had a lot, you know, a couple years back, you know what I'm saying? Sitting in the crib. Police come running in the crib. Boom, they hit my crib, they raised my crib. I got some coke. I got about 13,000 in cash in the crib. And they got the search warrant. They say, yo, informant. Brought some coke out of this house. We had a search warrant to search your house. I'm like, informant? What are you talking about? I don't serve people out of my house. You know what I'm saying? So they interrogating me. They're trying to tear my crib to fuck. You know what I mean? They got my babies crying. You know what I'm saying? They got my wife teared up. At the beginning, I'm telling them, do what you got to do. Lock me up. You know what I'm saying? I don't got no rap. You know what I'm saying? Y'all you do is whatever. Long story short, they put the cuffs on my wife. They called DHS, take the kids. They said they're gonna take my crib and give it up to the to the city. So now they like, yo, this your last chance. Who you who you wanna get somebody up? I said, listen, I don't have nobody to get you. Then they asked me, well, can you give up this guy? It shows me a picture of my partner, Tommy Hill. They said, we want you to we want you to set him up. I said, well. Why should I set them up? Y'all ain't tell me who set me up. Tell me who set me up, and then I might set them up. I only dealt with my circle, my immediate circle. So if, if, it, if it was an informant who informed on me, then he had to actually come from my Colt Ram Squad family. The fact of the matter is, I set Tommy Hill up because I thought he did something to me. You know, I never felt good about it because I wasn't sure that he did anything to me. I was just assuming because a couple of days prior to that, he offered to give me some work. And I just found that a little bit strange. Recently, I found out who actually did, did set me up. And I just want to apologize to him, man, in front of the, you know I mean? in front of the world, in front of millions, you know. When only white people drove them joints. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All right, come on. So that's all I love, and I love, I love what he's doing, and I, I hope he continues to be blessed. But, dude, stop fronting to the people, man. They know them streets, dog. Don't be mentioning no Joey Muzzy. Like, and you know all this started from young Chris, right? Yeah. Camp, you know young Chris started this whole shit? Yes. Yeah, with him. I declare Blue Sky, he wants to say, home with Joey Molino, Tommy Hill ratted, what we do to him, we Kabani savage him, right? Wow. Wow. You know how powerful that is? That's crazy. Boy, you know what Cabani represents? If you're from Philly, he's a real boss. Some, some things happen over there. You know what Joey represents? But the thing about it is, Chris, you don't know either one of them. I know both of them. they real men. And when you start putting my name between real men trying to confuse the public, you're, going to, you're, you're, you're acting like you're trying to get my children hurt. So it becomes personal. Because, you know, Tommy Hill didn't tell on no Joey Molino. Tommy Hill didn't tell on no... You know, you know the situation. But we do know that you took the stand on Spado. Who's from Major Figures. Who was one of the finest rap from Philly. With his mouthpiece. Spado Ben was a dresser. He Ben was wearing that Versace slim cut shit. That's what's under the rug, too. That, that little situation was definitely swept under the rug with Philly no though. You know why I swept under the rug? There's a thin line between life and death. An SV Twiz film that shows the truth about what's going on in the hood. So yeah, cousin, if you're gonna be able to help me out with this job, like I need this one bro bad. Like I'm not trying You've seen the rest. Now it's time to see the best. Starring Vodka Thousand Proof and SV Twiz. A hood drama that shows you the meaning of money. 
power and respect torn apart. Yo, you really doing your thing with that girl? Black, what's up, nigga? I can't call it, bro. Hey, yo, what's up?